All right. We're doing it. We're doing it, guys. We're starting off the vlog today. Um, I'm excited. Zoe here is excited. And Sophie over there is excited. You can't see her right now, but just know she's jumping for joy. I did procrastinate a little. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm a little nervous. It's a little weird for me talking to a camera in a room by myself. Um, but we're going to power through. We're going to get it done. I'm going to show this journey. What has happened so far is I've already had the appointment with the endometriosis specialist. And my specialist is in Austin. Um, so what happened during that appointment is he basically um, just kind of asked me about where my journey has been. I've been having flare-ups for two years now. So my flare-ups actually started around this time two years ago. So in 2019 is when my flare-up started. Um, and so this is kind of coming full circle with this second surgery being the gold standard surgery. So I'm hoping that I can close this chapter after this, at least for a while and focus on other things because this condition has literally consumed my life for the last two years it's been it's been rough so i'm excited to move on um but yeah so he went over my past medical records past surgery past imaging um past records from other specialists that i've been to because i think he's like the third specialist that i've been to um and so we reviewed all of that together and then by the end of the appointment, you know, I was a candidate for surgery. So um, that may not be a prize to some people, but that's a prize to me uh, because endometriosis is, is taxing on the body. It's taxing on the mind. It's taxing on the soul. Um, the pain is immense. It, it, is, it is nothing I've ever experienced before. These last two years, like the pain that I've experienced is nothing like I've ever experienced before. Like, I feel like I can take on almost any pain having dealt with endometriosis. He also recommended to get my appendix taken out. And that's where our first kind of snag comes in because I had to actually cancel that appointment today. That general surgeon does not take my insurance. And I'm not rich, guys. I'm not rich. I'm not balling. I wish I was, but I'm not. Um, and I can't pay for surgery out of pocket. If I could, this ordeal would have been over a long time ago, but I can't. So I have to call the specialist office tomorrow and figure out what the game plan will be from there. If it's not necessary for me to have my appendix removed, I would like to keep my surgery date, which is March the 10th. If he just absolutely thinks that it's necessary, then I'll have to move it back. But the things that we have on the schedule so far is, uh, well, that's not on the schedule anymore, but the other things that we have are um, my pre-op appointment will be with my PCP here in Houston. Um, my PCP will do my initial blood work, um, just check me out to make sure that I'm fit enough for surgery. Um, and then he'll write a report, send it to my specialist before surgery saying, hey, she checks out, um, she's good to go. Um, on the 22nd of February, we'll have my MRI, um, updated MRI and then surgery scheduled for March march 10th but i hope y'all are excited um or you know interested i hope this is an interesting vlog for y'all i don't i don't want to make a vlog and it not be interesting so i hope it's interesting i hope you learned something and i'll check in with you guys tomorrow so i know that i said i would be back the next day in the last clip um but it's actually been like two weeks i've had a lot of bumps in the road the last clip that i did was february 2nd i had an appointment the next day february 3rd with the general surgeon. Um, they called me that morning and told me my appointment um, was gonna be canceled basically because he didn't take my insurance. I was referred to a new general surgeon uh, for my appendectomy and that appointment was supposed to be scheduled on the 16th. Texas had an Arctic blast. That just, 
stopped everything. Um, Texas, we're not used to that kind of weather, like snow, like what is that? No power, no water. Um, of course, like the cities and businesses and everything just completely shut down. It was a little rough. Um, yesterday I had my PCP appointment, the pre-op appointment. It had a few more steps than what I anticipated. I just don't know what it is about like blood pressure. It's like when I get my blood pressure taken, I just don't even know how to breathe like a normal person. Well, he put me on a baby script of high blood pressure medicine. And I am not compliant when it comes to taking medication. Like taking medication daily, I, I just can't do it. Like, it's a big challenge for me. They also did a chest x-ray, an EKG, all of those things came back normal. And then I had to go back in today and they did my blood work. I just wanted to catch all you guys up on what's been going on. And yeah, so. Hey guys, so it's the next day. Um, yesterday, as you saw in the previous clip, um, I had my general surgery appointment and basically um, we just talked about whether or not it was necessary for me to get my appendix removed. Um, and the consensus of that appointment basically was that we would go ahead and remove it um, since we're already doing surgery. And then they reviewed my MRI with me. He didn't go into too much detail, um, just kind of gave me a reference of the size of my cyst and stuff like that. Um, and then he kind of wanted to leave the details of the MRI to my doctor or my specialist. So my specialist office called me this morning and they are basically saying that my, so I have two cysts. My left um, cyst is five centimeters. My right cyst is 10 centimeters. Um, I just had an ultrasound last year around like July, it was seven. 
at that point and now it's 10 so it's gotten bigger he said that the cis um the left one was about the size of a lemon and then the right one was about the size of an avocado and they're talking about going ahead and removing my right ovary i don't know i don't know how i feel about it it's i don't know i'm kind of i don't know i don't even know like what i feel right now i'm probably gonna cry about it later um when the doctor that i saw yesterday oh my god i'm getting choked up okay when the doctor that i saw yesterday went over the mri with me i kind of prepared myself for them to tell me that they want were possibly going to remove the right ovary they didn't give me a definite they said they had to wait and see um how um deep the cyst is infiltrating the ovary before they could decide um he's going to try to remove the cyst without removing my ovary i don't know it's just i just have had plans to do fertility after surgery which i mean i still can but i just in my mindset right now it's just harder it's gonna be harder and honestly, that kind of, um, I don't know. It's like, all I'm thinking about is fertility. And I'm kind of questioning, you know, some of the life decisions that, that I've made, like, as far as like, should I've been, should I have been focused more on, you know, starting a family than education like should I have done a four-year degree and kind of started my career and started my family you know you know years ago or whenever I graduated undergrad and which sounds crazy because I love my job and I like being a doctor but you know I definitely put those things fertility and starting family on a back burn on the back burner because I wanted to concentrate on on school and making it through school and now I'm kind of wondering if that was a mistake if I do you know get to you know be pregnant and have a kid I'll be a lot more grateful a lot more thankful and cherish it a lot more than I would if I you know wasn't going through this stuff you know anybody who goes through fertility wants to be wants the process to be as easy as possible and it's just like you know it just makes it harder having endometriosis can make fertility harder and having one ovary makes it harder and it's just like it just seems like it just keeps that process just keeps getting harder and harder and i feel like i'm being really dramatic right now but this is just how i feel right now and i'm hoping that i'm wrong i'm hoping that i can look back on this video and and say that oh you were just so dramatic and and look it all worked out i really hope that i can say that you know a couple years or a few years down the line I re I'm really hoping that I can but I don't know this is just how I feel it's right March now March 8th um so surgery's coming up fast and I'm excited um but today I'm feeling it so um so what I tried to do is I tried to just completely knock off all pain medicine just wanted to see if I could do it um because you know, before surgery, you're supposed to stop, you know, taking pain meds or like NSAIDs and stuff like that. But you can still take like Tylenol and and things like that. So um, I've been trying to not take pain medicine like completely. And oh my God, I've been in so much pain. This whole, like all of last week was so much pain. And then today was my last day of work. Um, so I was super busy before, um, 
I'll be not able to adjust for two weeks. But yeah, I finally had to break down and take a Tylenol. I only took like a little less than half of one just because I don't know. I'm trying. I don't know. It's just I just wanted to see how long I could go without pain medicine. Um, I probably could have grit and bared it and not, but there were just some days like days ago before I was supposed to stop um, taking pain medicine. I just was like, oh, I can't do this. Um, so I haven't been taking any kind of pain medicine for the last um, few days whenever my day started. Um, I just had to break down and take a Tylenol today. I, I couldn't do it. So I'm super ready for surgery. Um, my body is like gearing down you know like when you go on vacation and like a few days like your last few days of work your body just kind of like gears down that's what mine is doing like it knows surgery is coming up and it's just like coasting down like my body is tired and um I just want to thank my body I want to thank God for just allowing me to be able to endure this pain it's definitely been hard um but I just think I'm just very thankful that you know my body has not given up on me. I don't want to get teary eyed, but I'm I'm thankful that my body has not given up on me. Um, I'm thankful that God has given me the strength to be able to handle this pain. Um, so I'm thankful. I'm grateful, but uh, I'm ready. I'm I'm tired. My my joints just hurt so bad at this point, which is why I had to take the take medicine, but yeah my my back my knees my ankles my the joints in my hands they all are just it just all oh, it just all hurts so i just wanted to check in um tomorrow is my surgery prep day so no food i'm yeah no solid food just liquid and taking that magnesium citrate i've never taken it before and i'm a little scared of how that's going to uh, going to go but yeah, I just wanted to check in and just give you an update on how I'm feeling a couple days before surgery. surgery it's march 10th um 4 a.m we have to be to the hospital at 5 a.m um so we're just kind of finishing getting ready and we're gonna leave about 4 30 the hospital is about tw like 15 20 minutes away from the hotel so we're gonna be heading out in just a little bit and i'm so so excited finally And it's the third hallway here on the left, just so you know, because you can wait in this room when she goes to surgery. But you can also go to the cafeteria and come back. So third hallway on the left, the number's on the door. Any loose deep-worn bodies or anything that we call your mouth? No. Um, 
Have you had anesthesia before? Yes. Any problems with it at all? Uh, just have vomiting. Yeah. No, vomiting. Yeah. Okay, we can give you stuff for that. All right, let's see. When was the last time you did have something to drink? Did the, I was on clear liquid. Yeah, so any medications this morning? Um, only with the nurse stage. Okay. She wants to give you some gap with it. Gap. Okay. Next thing you remember is being in recovery. Okay. All right. You do have to put a special airway in the back of your throat too, get those into your vocal cords that'll come in and go when you're asleep, come out before you wake up. Okay. But because of the dry air state, yes, sometimes you have to put the dry space. Right. And there'll be a million pictures. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> but we'll go over those in two weeks. Okay. <coughs> It's okay to talk to your sister or mom. Mom, <laughs> uh, just give it a hand. Hi. Hi. She did well. Hi, Ula, this is Sarah. She's joining our packing team. This is Ula. Is she awake? No, she's still. Oh, wow. Filled with the fluid um, that comes from endometriosis. And so this is just working a little at a time, working, 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 trying to get things to be unstuck. Okay. Um, it, it becomes very, very difficult. Your right ovary, this is what it, this is what it ended up looking like. That, your ovary should be about that little fit. Let me show you. About this little bit right here would be a normal ovary. Oh. And look at this disaster. Yeah. So I tried, I took the cyst out, I took, I tried to salvage it, but it was just not something that I think was going, I mean, I could have sewed it back up and left it in you, but I think you would have had horrible pain with right. it. Right. Is that the well, inside of it? This is the inside of the ovary. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is the outside of it here. It's this great big mess. That's so, the outside? Sorry? I said that's the outside? Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, so all things considered, you still there? You still there? Mm hmm. Okay, all things considered, um, your right ovary being gone, look how, look how this looks at this point. Uh, this is at the end of the case. It's not, I know it looks kind of bad because there's a lot of um, uh, what we call char. Not from burning the endometriosis, but when you cut away endometriosis, it tends to bleed. Uh -huh. and the tissues are oozy. Okay. So you use electrocautery to stop the, the bleeding. Okay. Uh, your tube is loose now. Your tube is free. Your, your tubes are open. You have one good functional ovary. Uh, all this surface of these tissues will heal. Okay. And there's two things that I do to help them to heal. One of them is there's a, a, a spray of this special... Uh, uh, chemical, not really a chemical, but it, it is mixed together in such a way that it causes all that oozing to stop. Mm -hmm. And it, it also causes a sealant, so to speak, over all of that tissue. That's called a uh, Vista seal. Okay. And that helps things not to get stuck together. But this stuff right here is magic. This stuff is very expensive. It's called Amniofix. Mm -hmm. And Amniofix is made from human placenta. Mm -hmm. What it does is it has some properties that are kind of magical to pregnancy and it causes um, the tissue to heal more quickly and it's an excellent barrier so that nothing gets stuck to anything else. Mm -hmm. If you look at the end of the procedure, you're way more normal than you were before. Yeah. That, that, that stuff I put on top of every, your, your um, sidewalls and everything so they don't get stuck together. Mm -hmm. uh, there was stuff on your bladder, so, you know, taking... Some of this endometriosis off your bladder. I mean, it was everywhere. Okay. It really, really was. In the pelvis. A gone. month later now, it's, I think today is August, the tw not August, April the 12th. Whoa. What went on was that they cleaned out as much as they could. They removed my appendix. They removed my right ovary. Um, so, yeah, my uh, fertility, I don't know if it shows it in the last clip. I don't remember. 
but uh, my fertility before surgery was zero. They said everything was just stuck together, stuck to the walls, just everything was just frozen. I had frozen pelvis um, and now my fertility, he rates at about 50 to 60%. So um, right now I'm kind of in the process of figuring out what I want to do as far as my fertility options, whether that's IUI, IVF, foster to adopt. I'm not really sure. I'm open to all of them, um, but I just know that I want to be a mom. That's all I know. So I'm going to figure it out, how to make it happen. But yeah, overall, I'm feeling good. Um, I do have hot flashes because of the removal of my ovary. I have not had a cycle yet. I'm still waiting on that. Pain-wise, I feel good. Um, I don't have any pain, which is a little weird. And I do have a video idea about uh, that I want to do um, about, you know, just the after mentality of surgery, or at least the things that I've gone through. What else? I don't know. No pain. Um, I used to sleep on my heating pad on the highest setting. I can't even stand it on the lowest setting now. I think that mostly because of my hot flashes. Um, I'm not taking any pain medicine. I do still get headaches sometimes, but I think that's because I don't always eat the best. Um, so I still take Excedrin from time to time, but other than that, no pain meds. I leave. I can leave my TENS unit heating pad, because I have two heating pads. I have one at home and one that I kept in the car. Um, I don't even need either one of those. Um, yeah, so I'm just right now having fun, figuring it out, enjoying this new life because now I actually have a life and I, you know, want to go out and actually do things and so much to explore. I'm just kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do a whole video on it because I, I, I want to, I want to, to show or explain the good and bad that I've experienced after surgery, Mo more good than bad and i wouldn't even say the bad is really bad just just stay tuned for the video i don't want to i'm gonna sit here and give too much away but yeah i wanted to say thank you for watching thank you for coming along on the journey if you have any questions whatsoever you can um dm me and i'll happily give you any information i didn't really reveal the doctor that I went to only because I didn't really ask his permission to film him. So that's why a lot of the faces and stuff are blurred out. Um, but if you have, if you need information about doctors um, or anything like that, uh, let me know. I'm more than happy to give you any, any information that you need to help you get out of pain. And yeah, I'll be seeing you guys. Thank you so much for watching the video and Hopefully this is the last surgery.